Welcome to two examples of determining the product of three fractions. Multiplying three fractions is almost the same as multiplying two fractions, except when multiplying the numerators and denominators, we'll have three products instead of two. But before we multiply, it's recommended that we simplify first, meaning we identify any common factors between the numerators and denominators that would simplify to one. So looking at our first product, we're going to write the numerators and denominators in prime factored form to help us simplify. Well, the first fraction, two-thirds, both two and three are prime. The second fraction, two-fifths, two and five are both prime. For the third fraction, seven is prime. But for eight, the prime factorization would be, well, we have four times two, and four is equal to two times two. So the prime factorization of eight would be two times two times two. Notice when we have everything written out in prime factored form, we can actually see the common factors. Two over two simplifies to one, and two over two simplifies to one. So now we can multiply, knowing our product will be in simplest form. So if we multiply the numerators together, this would be one times one times seven, or seven. And then for the denominator, we have three times five, that's 15 times two, that would be 30. So our product is seven thirtieths. Now if you're wondering if we're required to write out the prime factorization like this in order to simplify before multiplying, and the answer is no, there's another way to show this. If we know our multiplication tables really well, and we notice that two and eight share a common factor of two, and there's one, two, and two, and four twos and eight, and then we notice that this two and this four share a common factor of two, and there's one, two, and two, and two twos and four, we can show the simplifying this way, but I think writing out the prime factorization is a way to better organize our work, and we actually can see the common factors, which can be helpful. Looking at our second example, notice how we have a negative times a positive times a negative, so our product will be positive. But let's go ahead and write everything out in prime factored form so we can simplify before we multiply. So the first fraction is negative four-fifths. I'm going to move the negative up to the numerator and four is equal to two times two, so we have negative two times two, five is prime, times nine-tenths, the prime factorization of nine would be three times three, the prime factorization of ten would be two times five, and then for the third fraction, again it's negative, so we'll put the negative in the numerator, and fifteen is equal to three times five, so we'll have negative three times five, and then for eighteen, well eighteen is equal to two times nine, nine is equal to three times three, so the prime factorization would be two times three times three. And now we'll look for the common factors between the numerators and denominators that would simplify to one. So looking at these first two fractions, notice how we have two over two, that would simplify to one. Looking at the second and third fractions, Notice how we have three over three, that simplifies to one, and three over three again, that simplifies to one. We also have a common factor of five, five over five simplifies to one. And now also looking at the first and third fraction, we have another two over two. Now that we have identified all the common factors between the numerators and denominators, we can multiply knowing our product will be in simplest form. So looking at the numerator, remember these are all simplifying to ones. So we have negative one times one times negative three, that's positive three. And for the denominator we'd have five times one times one, or just five. So our product is three-fifths. Okay, I hope you found these two examples helpful.